ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. As San Diegans prepare to celebrate the holiday, shots rang out in the Midway District, killing a man sitting behind the wheel of his car. Now on the eve of Thanksgiving, there's an active murder investigation as police hunt for the killer. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo is at the scene where police found the victim behind a shopping center. It's still very early in the investigation and police aren't exactly sure if they're looking for one or multiple suspects. Much of the investigation is focused behind this shopping center off of Midway Drive. Police say they got a call of shots fired around 6 15 this evening. When they showed up, they found a car that had hit a retaining wall in the parking lot. There was a man in the driver's seat with an apparent gunshot wound. He was rushed to the hospital where he died. Police say witnesses reported another person in the car taking off from the scene, but right now it's unclear if that person is the suspect. Now, police expect to be out here for several hours investigating. They are also looking for any possible surveillance video from the shopping center. In the Midway District, Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. And we also have some more breaking news right now. The 5 South off-ramp to SeaWorld Drive is closed after a fatal, a fatal multiple vehicle crash sent several people to the hospital. We know that at least eight people, including adults and children, are in the hospital tonight. At least one has died. This is still a developing situation. We are working to find out what caused the crash and the conditions of those injured. Of course, we'll bring you updates on ABC 10 News this morning. And the woman stabbed to death on a Carlsbad trail has been identified. Police say 68 year old Lisa Thorberg was killed in broad daylight as she walked or jogged on the Hosp Grove Trail Monday morning. Investigators have narrowed the time of the stabbing to between 10 and 11 a.m. According to a citizen tip, there may have been a man in the area at the time described as white or Hispanic with a husky build, a tan complexion and dark hair. He was said to be wearing dark black clothing and walking with a slight shuffle or limp. Anyone with information is asked to call Carlsbad police. A San Diego church is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to stop what it claims are abuses of religious freedom by Governor Gavin Newsom. The South Bay United Pentecostal Church claims the governor's restrictions on indoor gatherings discriminate against houses of worship. The Supreme Court rejected the church's previous request for an injunction earlier this year. The complaint also names other officials, including Dr. Wilma Wooten and Sheriff Bill Gore. Now, less than two hours ago, the U.S. Supreme Court blocked COVID restrictions for some houses of worship in New York. That's a reversal from the California case we just mentioned. The difference? The high court now has a conservative majority with new Justice Amy Coney Barrett casting the pivotal vote in that 5-4 decision. Help is on the way tonight for restaurants, gyms and other businesses that have been financially devastated by the pandemic. The county has given the green light for a $20 million temporary relief package. ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura spoke with businesses about this economic lifeline coming at a crucial time. Several business owners tell me that they are just learning that this money has become available. They are looking to see if they qualify for the help. Point Loma Sports Club has adapted during the pandemic, closing indoor areas and moving its equipment and operations outside. Your focus is on making sure nobody you know, gets sick or hurt. And for us, again, everybody goes home at the end of the day healthy. General Manager Brian Welch says the pandemic has forced them to cut back. You know, you've gone from essentially 20,000 square feet of space to, you know, 5,000 square feet of space. You don't need the staffing that you would, you know, to run a 20,000 square foot business. So instead of somebody having 24 hours this week, it's like we can only give you 16. On Wednesday, the San Diego County Board of Supervisors unanimously approved a $20 million temporary relief package. It will be divided between the five districts in the county, each getting $4 million. The money will come from the county's general fund. It will go to businesses and industries that have been severely impacted by COVID-19 related restrictions in the purple tier, including gyms, restaurants, movie theaters, and museums. The money will be distributed in the form of grants, which means businesses will not have to pay them back. They didn't do anything wrong. Uh, a year ago, we never would have imagined that uh, indoor settings where people gather together would 
would be dangerous because of a global pandemic. Um, but the situation in front of us forces us to take unprecedented action. Welch says while they plan to apply, he realizes their need may not be as great as other businesses that he says should be prioritized. So be it if the $20 million is used up on people that just that's the only chance they have to kind of, you know, buy time, ride this out, be successful six months from now, then by all means get in front. Um, our ask would be less. And if it's towards the back of the line and there's revenue left over where we can actually use it for our people, you know, we're, we're happy that it's available. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. This Thanksgiving, instead of doing all the cooking at home, you could help small businesses by ordering takeout. And we caught up with the co-owner of BAP's restaurant in Escondido. He said they have prepared enough to go Thanksgiving meals to feed between 650 and 700 people. The restaurant has a stack of boxes ready to fill for tomorrow's big dinner. So all those people that usually come to San Diego aren't coming here. So now all we have is the people who already live here. Well, if you only have two or three people in your household, you're not going to want to take the time to cook a full Thanksgiving spread. He's right about that. And he expects to feed an additional four to 500 people tomorrow, in addition to the hundreds of takeout customers. In our Scientific ABC 10 News Union Turbine poll, 6% of people said they're having a larger than usual Thanksgiving meal, but 40% said it will be smaller than usual. 43% said about the same. 10% are not celebrating at all. And 2% said they're not sure. One day after setting a new one day record, the number of cases in San Diego dropped to below 1,000 today. The 944 new cases bring our overall total to 75,000. There were also four new deaths reported today, bringing our total to 988. Since the beginning of the pandemic, health experts have warned that if we're not careful, COVID cases could surge out of control and hospitals would be overwhelmed. We've seen that happen across the country and San Diego could be next. The greatest concern right now is what we will see in the days and weeks after Thanksgiving. Our ABC tennis reporter Mimi Alcala spoke with the chief medical officer at Scripps Health about meeting those concerns. We're actually seeing significant increases. We're actually higher than we were back in July. More people are being hospitalized with COVID-19 across San Diego County, and we're now breaking hospitalization records set during the summer. Yesterday alone, with the numbers that we got from the county, we had 532 hospitalizations. Dr. Ghazala Sharif is the chief medical officer for acute care at Scripps Health. Today at Scripps, uh, we have 117 cases. She says concern from those in the medical field is growing, not only after local Halloween parties, but as we enter Thanksgiving and the next several holidays. She expects the numbers to continue climbing into early 2021. What we're seeing now is what we had predicted. We do worry that two, three weeks out from now, are we going to see that, that number increase as well? New Year's Eve is December 31st. If you calculate just exactly what we're seeing now, people start getting sick in that first two weeks and they get really sick and they get hospitalized and then the intensive care unit comes. So I am uh, very worried. She says like many healthcare systems, Scripps is seeing a surge in hospitalizations countywide, but even more in the South Bay where COVID-19 has hit the community hard. Scripps has a detailed plan in place and has managed to balance hospital capacity by transferring patients to different hospitals in an effort not to overwhelm any specific location. Every day, between you know, four to five patients are getting transferred out of the, the Chula Vista campus. So yesterday uh, we had five uh, transfers. Uh, this morning we had two from Chula Vista to Green and two Mercy Chula Vista to La Jolla. Dr. Sharif says hospitals are well equipped with PPE this time around, but while many people may be letting their guards down, she's reminding everyone that this isn't over and will get worse if we don't act now. Just one thing that you do could impact so many lives afterwards. Amy Alcala, ABC 10 News. And Dr. Sharif also says she recently met with chief medical officers from hospitals across the county and says they are seeing the very similar situation. She says outbreaks within hospital staff is also a growing problem here and across the country as well. That makes it more difficult to get traveling nurses to fill in when staff members are sick. As American families head into an unusual Thanksgiving holiday amid a surging pandemic, President-elect Joe Biden today delivered a message of empathy and unity. But yes, it's been a really hard year, particularly hard for over 250,000 people and their families. But I still believe we have much to be thankful for. 
As of today, the coronavirus has killed more than 260,000 Americans. The president-elect used his speech to send condolences to families sitting down at dinner tables this Thanksgiving filled with grief. For those who have lost a loved one, I know that this time of year can be especially difficult. Believe me. Meantime, the president-elect is preparing for his first classified presidential daily briefing. That is expected to happen on Monday.